Eight to ten girls lined up in a row with maybe two or three boys. They're all young, some as young as seven or eight. A man goes down the road to inspect them, looking them up and down before making his selection and paying for his merchandise. He takes the child away. You would think that I'm describing to you a scene from 1700 or 1800 U.S. slave trade, but the scene I'm describing to you is April 17, 2016, where modern-day slavery is happening from Brooklyn hotels to the mansions of Beverly Hills. 68 years after Article 4 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we have more slaves today than any other time in human history. As an actress, I'm told to portray different characters, but I've never portrayed a real person before. April 2012, my agent called and told me that I would be betraying a real teenager who had been sexually trafficked. Now, at the time, as a 12-year-old, I wasn't even allowed to watch a couple kiss on television, so I definitely didn't know what human trafficking was. I was about to enter a world that is dark, evil, and inhumane. A beautiful day in April, I arrived at the studio and was greeted by a great crew from the production company Art Not War. They transformed me into Monica. For a public service announcement, bringing attention to child sex trafficking being conducted on the internet. I thought he was my boyfriend. I thought he loved me for real. But he made me work every day. He threatened me, he made me take drugs. He raped me a bunch of times. And then he sold me to four, sometimes five men a day for $100 an hour. One time, there was 10 men in one day. I thought they would kill me. I thought I'd never get away. My pimp advertised me online at Backpage.com. That's how these guys would buy me. I'm 13. Monica was a sexually trafficked victim from Washington, D.C., who was already the mother of a baby boy. She is not a character. She is a real girl, a real teenager, just like us, who is made the property of someone else for profit. She generated income for her owner by being forced to sleep with men, sometimes as many as 10 men a day. Most of the buyers found out about Monica through a popular online website. Monica had been trafficked since the age of nine. I gave her the made-up name Monica because I wanted to protect her. I was too late to protect her innocence, but I could protect her identity from the world. Although this world was completely new to me, the director was satisfied with just a few takes. Monica changed my life. I knew that when the director said, that's a wrap for me, that was the beginning of my action. I couldn't believe that there were children being sold for sex and labor. Stopping human trafficking, but especially child sex and labor trafficking, became a major life mission for me. I then got the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. and meet Monica and other survivors of child sex trafficking. Monica had seen the ad and thought I did a great job. I also got the opportunity to meet her beautiful baby boy, who was later placed in the foster care system. As we toured the Capitol together, I couldn't help but think how come more Americans didn't know that there were children being sold for sex and labor. Children, real children being sold for sex. My first priority became letting Americans know that human trafficking wasn't just an over there problem, meaning another country. Human trafficking happens right here in the United States, including 8,800 to 12,000 victims right here in San Diego, which also happens to be one of the top three spots for human trafficking in the United States. It is also important for people to separate and differentiate prostitution and human trafficking. A lot of people aren't outraged about human trafficking because they associate it with prostitution. Prostitution is a choice. Human trafficking is by force. 
These days, it has become incredibly easy for a trafficker to traffic a child. All a trafficker needs is a smartphone to take pictures, recruit girls, post ads online, and make appointments with Johns who like raping children. The more I dove into research, the more outraged I became. I couldn't believe that there were children our age being sold for sex and labor. I couldn't believe it. I used my public service announcement in a petition asking Village Voice Media to get rid of its Backpage.com section. My petition forced Village Voice Media to separate from Backpage.com, but Backpage still exists as one of the top online websites for human trafficking. I repeat that. Backpage.com remains as one of the top online sites for human trafficking. I was doing everything I could to end human trafficking, but I wasn't asking my peers, the biggest group of victims for help. We are the digital generation, the social media generation, and together we can make anything happen. It is a momentum task, but I am sure we can do it. I need your help to not only end human trafficking, but to end all forms of modern day slavery. We can do it. I know we can. All of you sitting in the audience today can help me. Join me in ending this epidemic. I know a lot of you work in customer service related fields. Learn the signs of trafficking related to your field of work. Get involved, speak up and speak out, get informed and help me shed a light on one of the worst crimes facing humanity today. Thank you.